Racing isn't easy, but experiencing it is. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head to head against other drivers chosen by skill based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series. In officially licensed cars, engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com. Welcome one, welcome all to SimSpeed TV. It's time for the third round of the NeuroPower 360 Power Series presented of course by Oceanic Dirt Sim Events. This is a round we've been looking forward to for quite some time. It's a return to one of the greats in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. We're going to Williams Grove Speedway. Long straights, sharp corners and high speeds. It is the sprint car track of sprint car tracks minus the likes of Knoxville and Eldora, of course. An absolutely legendary circuit in its own right and we have got uh, one heck of a season to continue on here to bring it to you all live on youtube facebook and kick is myself reese gardner with dan yeaman alongside me in the commentary box well dan williams grove has been around for many a decade and uh, it continues to bring up fantastic racing we've had some of the best dirt events we've ever covered at this circuit well, I'm certainly looking forward to seeing what comes our way tonight, Reese. And, uh, and yeah, I guess when all things being said and done, I actually don't have the fortune of seeing what's come in well, races and years past. But here we are up in the northeast corner of the United States, following on, as I said, in Pennsylvania once again here and down to, well, as I was looking at the, the, the track, the fact that we have a town name, maybe I consider like the interesting town names, but Mechanicsburg here this evening mm. uh, for this speedway. It's, it's a fascinating name, I guess, um, you could say. But as you pointed out there to get this uh, broadcast underway tonight, long straights despite the fact that the overall circuit is half a mile in length. And we can see there, decent amount of banking though in the turns to help the drivers keep the speed up as they loop around one, two, and three, four before firing back on down those straightaways here. Yeah, very wide corners, which means the slide job will be uh, absolute priority here. You're probably going to be seeing sliders at just about every corner uh, in the heats, in the dashes and the races here tonight. And of course, uh, 1939, this place opened. Just incredible to think that this place has been around for so long and it continues to enjoy the status it does amongst the dirt racing community in the United States and around the world as well. Well, before we get into tonight's racing action, we should probably keep an eye on uh, how the standings have gone going into this round, Dan. It's been a bit of a mixed up season by ODSE standards. Usually we see the likes of Tim Ryan, Joel Berkeley, Harry Stewart running away with things, but that has been far from the case here. Sure has, and preparing these earlier this afternoon it was quite interesting to see how things stack up. The fact that within our top 10 drivers here, Reese, we have two pairs of equal standings. Jaden Russell, Clayton Davies, both now under the Synergy Sim Racing banner, atop the standings, joint on 192 points, given the fact that they have both won one round each and come second in the round, which they did not win. And then Daniel Gow making it an all Synergy Sim Racing drivers lockout here for the 360 Power Series, specifically. At the back of the group, we've also then got Joe Daly and John Schultz tied up in equal ninth position there as well. Yeah, indeed we have. And the points are still very close, this only being the third round. Tim Ryan in fifth spot, uh, only two points ahead of Braden Shute, usually the driver to beat in ODSE events. He certainly lost none of his one lap pace, but in the features so far, 
he hasn't had uh, the best of luck, which is quite uncharacteristic for Tim Ryan. Maybe he can turn his season around here at Williams Grove, or potentially uh, could see the returning Joel Berkeley steal top honors here. Joel's been doing um, a lot of busy work racing in the real world. He was Sedan Competitor of the Year uh, for this season at the Speedway Australia Awards Night last night, which was uh, which is uh, obviously fantastic for Joel. But he tends to be a Williams Grove specialist. He really loves this circuit. So I'm interested to see what he'll be able to do here after some time out of the seat and we haven't even gotten to this yet the dirt racing refresh dan i racing has completely changed the parameters of the dirt oval and most of the dirt road circuits around here and new physics for the sprint cars so the drivers have taken an extra week's break to get used to all of that I mean, yeah, the fact that this this round was originally scheduled for two weeks ago, uh, which actually would have put it pre-dirt refresh. Um, we can actually thank State of Origin for the initial delay, but then, yeah, this was going to drop on the second night, uh, well, the first night after the update, so I think, yeah, credit to the ODC admins for giving us, an, not just us, but mainly the extra drivers a bit more time a week to try and settle in and get a feel for these cars. A lot of feedback. Definitely mixed, I have to say, Reese. Definitely seen some some interested drivers who are interested, some drivers who are not so interested as to the way these cars might end up driving here this evening. So it's going to be uh, quite interesting, I think, as it looks like from what I'm seeing. Drivers being allowed to head out for some final practice. They've been given more laps than they normally get as a result of the new uh, physics, uh, basically. So they're going to get more time to wear the track in a bit here in practice, Reese. But before we get to all that, also got one more standings graphic for you here and for everyone watching along with us tonight. We've also got the ODSE 2023 Sprint Car Championship standings, which combine the results from the 410 Thunder Series we covered earlier this year on SimSpeed and the ongoing 360 Power Series. And despite the fact that Tim Ryan Reese has had a bit of a rough run in the Power Series so far, his combined results still put him on top after eight rounds of combined action. Yeah, and that is a uh, that is a good 39 points ahead of Riley Bilson as well. So Tim still has quite a margin to play with if he wants the overall ODSE Sprint Car Championship for 2023. And even in these standings, we have drivers on equal points. Van der Wacker and Gao both on 562. Wow, fantastic stuff. We'll see how those standings stack up by the time tonight's racing is ended. But for now, those drivers are out on track at the moment and making sure that the track is worn in because that's one of the things that I was going to mention, Dan. With this dirt racing refresh coming from iRacing in the last patch, um, the, the tracks tend to take a bit longer to wear in. I noticed right off the bat there were a couple of forum posts complaining, oh, you know, we're, we're not getting that slick groove in our sessions. Well... Actually, um, more like the real world now, uh, the track has to take some time to wear in. Uh, it does take a little bit longer now, and a few more cars running around it, but we'll see how it works out for the drivers tonight with that extra time to uh, actually get some difference in lines uh, around this circuit. Here's the format, though. Heats, eight laps each and uh, the top four from each heat will advance to the a main and then we've got a c and b main of 10 and 12 laps each and then we have the dash of course presented by king race designs that uh, is going to be fantastic for this round it is again a little bit different it is the top two from each heat and uh, they will uh, all line up and the winner will start on pole position so a lot of action to come here for round three of the NeuroPal ODSE 360 Power Series, finishing up with 30 laps in the A main. Let's go then, Dan, into qualifying. We have four minutes remaining in this session, which has just started, and every driver will get two laps to set their time for the heats. They will indeed, and it looks like one of our first drivers heading out on track is going to be Josh Barry in the number 14 here. I'm just going to listen and make sure our audio levels are okay here. So apologies if that's a wee bit quiet. That needs to be cranked on up. All right. Yep, that well, was one thing I probably shouldn't have uh, left till 
late, so oopsies. We'll uh, get that fixed up as soon as we can here. Mm -hmm. Well, either way, Josh Barry uh, leaving it uh, very early to get into the corner for turn one on this lap. He's late apexing the final couple of corners, and his first lap is on the board. 17.6 second lap for Mr. Barry there, and it uh, seems relatively consistent with what we've seen so far. But Sean Stevens, the first driver to get into the 16 second bracket, that is uh, quite the margin that he has. He's uh, Josh. Barry's just gone even faster than that. 16.7 second lap time. Four tenths quicker than what he ran in practice. And that's those two drivers who have already done their laps. Corey Borden is going to be the next one around, I do believe. Joe Daly's just slipped in ahead of him, uh, though, on his first lap as Borden looks to finish his qualifying session here. And will he improve? Unfortunately, it looks like that is not going to be the case. Now the time is starting to come in thick and fast as these drivers make their way around Williams Grove here. Hopefully that audio level is slightly better than what it was, but uh, we might have to do some tweaking as the night goes on. Apologies for that one there. Well, Hayden Vickers now going to P3 in the session with a 16.9 second time. Leo Heaton just behind him, 17.042. And then Vanderwacker splits them, 16.94 from the 88, who's running very well in uh, the overall uh, ODSE sprint car standings. Good job from Braden Miller to get into the top five as well. 16.9 seconds for him. And Vanderwacker improves again on his second lap. Cuts a tenth out of it. Goes 16.83. And then Joel Berkeley to the top. 16.6 seconds on his second lap. He has lost none of his pace since his break from ODSE competition. And Williams Grove is smiling upon him once more. Travis Parrott we're taking a look at now in the number 33. Nice and tight towards the inside of the corner. And Nash Granger doing well too. Clayton Davies goes to P2. And he has got the rest of this lap still to come. We'll see if he can topple Joel Berkeley from the top of the standings. It's only three hundredths of a second in it. And 16.75 for Clayton Davies was not able to improve on that one. Brady Baldwin, series administrator. And doing very well in the 360 series this season. What will he be able to do here? 16.728 there. That's a slight improvement. 745 at the very end of it. That puts him into the top five. Brenton Hobson goes to seventh place. 16.934. That is the exact same time that Hayden Vickers has set. And now right at the end of the session, here comes Tim Ryan, who's looking to try and break back into the top four in the championship. 16.5. Five for Tim Ryan. That's what we like to see there. Right at the death of the session, Tim Ryan going to the top, and he knows that he doesn't have to make any further improvements. Well, what can Riley Bilson do? Well, he's running pretty well, isn't he? Uh, had a really good run in the 410 Thunder Series, and in this one too, 16.664 for him. That's good enough for fourth place in the quick time. But that quick time belongs to to Tim Ryan and we can go on through to the first of our heat sessions for tonight's competition starting on the front row will be Tim Ryan and Josh Barry behind them the 88 of Nathan Vanderwacker starting alongside Daniel Gow, who's having a really good championship so far in that purple synergy number three. John Schultz is going to start alongside Daniel Boyd on the next row. And then we have Braden Morosky and Cole Ferguson taking up the eight cars to start this first heat of four tonight. There we go, indeed. It's going to be an exciting one here tonight. And can confirm that as we put up earlier for the race info, it will be four heats of action for this one tonight. Looks like our leaders are just about to roll off of the uh, front of the field here. Just try and pick them up and then we can cut to, there we go, cut to them here now. As they'll start heading away from the starting grid for their opening eight lap run around the racetrack here in this revised, well, this updated car and session. Indeed. 
Well, you know what? Um, fun fact for you all. Um, the QuickTime uh, in the 2021 Power Series, that was the last time the Power Series uh, was run here at Williams Grove, Daniel Gao was the quickest, and his time was 17.163. So basically, everyone who qualified ahead of Braden Shoot has run faster than the fastest time last time we were at Williams Grove, and shows you how much uh, the uh, the dirt racing has changed this season. That they can put down those super quick times. Really looking forward to seeing how the times will stack up when they actually get into racing conditions. But we will have to wait and see for one half of a lap more as the drivers tour around and get their eye in for where the grip lies on the racetrack. Pace car is pulling away from Tim Ryan here at the front of the field. And these long straights here at Williams Grove offer up great opportunities for passing at their end. Let's see how much chaos will ensue in this first heat. Really good field here. And away they will go very shortly with Tim Ryan leading the way. Josh Barry alongside. They go flat out across the line. And we're racing at Williams Grove once more here at ODSE. Good start from Tim Ryan and from Josh Barry. But uh, falling back a little bit was uh, Daniel Gow and Daniel Boyd. They have fallen right to the end there. Uh, looks like a good run, it seems, from, uh, from Cole Ferguson. He is battling hard with Daniel Gow there, trying his best to get his eye into the corners. Vanderwacker making his way up into third spot, but it's Ryan and Barry in front, and Tim Ryan already leading by quite some margin. John Schultz battling hard with Daniel Gow here for the fourth spot. Yeah, this is looking a little interesting here, as Gow trying to work the inside of one and two on Schultz. They'll go side by side on the run up to three and four. Oh, oh. supposed to be a little bit of contact there, Reese, on the inside. On the way to the turn, Gao will take the spot in the process there. And that puts Gao up into that transfer spot. Also puts your top six back in order as they were off the race start. So getting a little grizzy here as... Oh, Paul, just that's a timer, not a lap counter. We definitely aren't doing by uh, time in this session. It's by laps. And this is going to be already halfway through. Apparently, I'm all kinds of over the shop. And that's not what I like to see about myself. Yeah, well, either way, it looks like a couple of these cars are all over the shop as well, with the drivers trying desperately to keep them straight through these corners. Look at Cole Ferguson. He's having to have a couple of goes at the corner every time he gets in there, and Tim Ryan is already on the verge of lapping him as they're on lap six of eight at the moment. Will be two to go at the end here, and on board here with John Schultz, he has lost a lot of ground to Daniel Gow there. That is a guaranteed spot in the feature he's looking at right there that purple car that he needs to pass but we'll see if any kind of pace can be found here from Mr. Schultz who is absolutely wheeling it through these corners it's looking mighty slippery out there at the moment the track's still pretty fresh they gotta wait a little longer for it to get worn in and to see if there's a cushion building up at the top most of most of them sticking very low to the bottom that is where the grip is final lap and checkered flag meanwhile for tim ryan who takes victory in the first heat just uh, avoided going a lap down did cole ferguson and gal will manage to finish fourth so at the end of it it's ryan barry van der Wacker, and gal who will transfer straight through to the feature schultz boyd morosky and ferguson will have to work their way through the alphabet yeah, unfortunate for those drivers, but that's how it goes sometimes. And just like that, it means we now prepare ourselves for the second of our four heats here. And Joel Berkeley on the front, well, has the fastest position. We'll be on the front row, sharing it with Sean Stevens here for the second of these heats uh, for to get this one underway. Hayden Vickers and Brent Hobbs will be off of row number two. And a P5 will be Lockie Phillips, and he's got Nash Granger alongside in sixth place. And then our seventh and final driver, for this second heat will be Corey Borden with Liam James in race control. Well, won't be racing uh, for what hopefully would be obvious reasons there. Mm. So they'll ignore the 004 on the grid and just wait the uh, seven well seven drivers to head off on this feature. Oh, sorry, heat race. I was getting myself all kinds of crisscross. And there we go. They're heading off. So without further ado, we'll bring them on the screen for you here 
as we get ready for this second heat to get underway. Indeed, Liam James uh, runs a very tight ship here, uh, race control in ODSE, and uh, the same procedure is followed every round. He joins the session as a driver because uh, it allows him to um, not have as much of a delay on things happening in the server. Um, there is a slight delay introduced if you're um, spectating a race as opposed to being in there as a driver, so it allows him to react to things a little bit quicker and make sure that he's right on the money when it comes to doling out any penalties that arise, and he always disqualifies himself uh, when the race he, he uh, the, the sim puts him in ends up starting. But this first row here, well, Joel Berkeley and Sean Stevens, the qualifying times are only separated by a tenth of a second, and around a circuit that's only about 16 and a half to 17 seconds long, uh, that is a bit of a margin, but I was mighty impressed with Sean Stevens' pace in qualifying, so it will be interesting to see if he can challenge Berkeley here. Yeah, this will be interesting indeed, I think. Well, indeed to watch as well. Bring it on in down towards turn three there. Pace truck will peel on off there in a second and be in the hands of Berkeley. Get this second heat of racing underway. Green flag is in Barney's hand, ready to get us underway. Stevens to the outside. Waiting for the go, and there it is, side by side in the turn one. We will go here for the start of Heat 2. Very wide is Stevens, and that allows Hayden Vickers through into second spot already. And Stevens is under a lot of threat from Brent Hobbs in the Beat the Dark machine behind him. This will be uh, a little bit interesting to work out as Berkeley hasn't quite skipped away yet. He's going narrow on the exit of the corners here, and it seems that Hayden Vickers has really turned up the pace here. And uh, all of the grip, it seems, that's available to them here. Berkeley getting a little bit more, more rotation in the mid-corner. Uh, Vickers, though, managing to keep the car in a bit more of a smooth arc through the turn. Just compare them here as they go through turns three and four. You'll notice that Berkeley uh, tends to have a couple of goes at the wheel, especially towards the exit, but Vickers, Check out his wheel work here. Turns in, just controlling the wheel there. And nice straight exit. Oh, he is really pushing hard, isn't he? The top four, meanwhile, not under much of a threat. They've broken away from fifth place, Lockie Phillips. Yeah, unfortunately for Lockie, there you can see. Uh, once you part, if I actually zoom on out a bit there, there you go. You might be able to just catch Brent Hobbs exiting stage left from our camera shots here as the second half of this heat is already underway. And the YOB Racing entry of uh, Phillips is probably looking at having to go the long way through here. Is, yeah, your top four, they're getting closer here at the front though, Reese. But oh, I was just going to say, it looks like they might be settling in to get this heat all done and dusted then progress themselves through to the A main. But well, the way Vickers is lunging into the turns here. Look oh. at that there in a turn three. How about that for confidence, it would seem. Uh, getting the car into the corner uh, compared to Berkeley. Who, as you got, you were saying, is uh, Berkeley's undisputed king of Williams Grove and ODSC competition. Uh, it might be just perhaps a little uh, caught, a little flat-footed when it comes to uh, this updates to the cars and the dirt. Yeah, potentially, but you know what? Berkeley is parking it at, on the apex in all the right places. He's not letting Vickers get a run on him out of the corners, and that's what you need to send a lunge up the inside. It's the final lap, and Vickers does not have any answer for Joel Berkeley. Really put him under pressure, but it will be the number nine who takes victory in the second heat. Vickers second, Stevens third, and Brent Hobbs finishes in fourth spot. It will be Lockie Phillips, Nash Granger, and Corey Borden who have to find their way through the alphabet from here. It's time for Heat 3, though. And starting up the front is Clayton Davies, followed by Brenton Hobson on the front row. This is quite a stacked top four here. All drivers that could be in the running for the win here, including Braden Miller and Jaden Russell on row two. We got Cameron De Bruyne starting in fifth spot. He's got Blaine Densley for company. And then the seventh and final car here will be Nick Ryan in that uh, brilliant pink number seven there. Well, just wait once again for the drivers to head on off on their pace. That looks like they're about to head away now, so we can switch that over there. And yeah, another seven car heat to get this one uh, underway. 
And I believe we'll be looking at, I can confirm real quick, seven cars for Heat 4 as well. So that's what to expect. And you know, just hearing over the rest of the channel, Liam James happy with what he's seeing out there so far tonight. Recent, I have to say, that would be a fair assessment indeed. Drivers racing hard, racing fair from what we've caught so far on the live speeds and feeds as uh, ourselves this two lap formation once again. So plenty of time for the drivers to get into their rhythm and mindset here before mm. they get underway. Yeah, and um, one driver that has not gotten underway has been Nick Ryan. Look at this. As they all come into view now, only six cars are going mm -hmm. to take the start. I'm not sure what happened to the number seven starting in seventh, but evidently not going to be taking any further part this evening. Yep. No sign of Nick Ryan... Uh, well, no sign of Nick Ryan dropping out of the server, I don't think. No, I can't see that uh, in the, the server. Oh, sorry, pardon me, actually. Yeah, Nick Ryan disconnected prior to Heat 1 or Heat 2. Not quite sure exactly when, Reese, mm. And has not rejoined the session since. Curious. So, there's the answer as to what exactly has happened there. But, unfortunately, that's going to have to be a mystery for another time because... Here comes Heat 3, and that means only two drivers here are going to miss out. So, who are they going to be? Can Densley and De Bruin make sure they're not the ones to be at the back? We'll find out here in a second as we get th Heat 3 underway. Already contact for second into turn one between Miller and Hobson. And uh, the pack is backed up there behind Hobbo now. Davies already starting to make moves away as Jaden Russell runs wide in the bright blue synergy car. The number 27. Miller still pushing hard on Hobbo. And to the inside goes Cameron De Bruin there, making his way up into fourth. But Jaden Russell is keeping him out bay just for now almost feeding him the rear right tire is Cameron De Bruyne as they come across the line to start lap three and it looks like uh, Russell might just have to concede this here the outside has uh, pretty much no grip no momentum so that is Jaden Russell all the way to the back now as now Blaine Densley thinks he can have a go at fourth spot oh boy this is getting a little exciting that's for sure Okay, so you see Josh with, uh, oh, yeah, Denzel, look at that there. Josh, there you go, De Bruyne, shocker through one and two, will drop Ooh. right back in behind. Uh, in fact, that's a long way off the back of the pack. It seems then Russell tries to fire in. Trouble up the top there for Braden Miller through three and four. Well, I say trouble, it seems remote. No, just a little slow through the middle, but okay, he's going to be the first to experiment with a committed high line, it seems here, mm. Reese. A lot of our drives have been going low, and there you go. First driver to say, well... Bye-bye to that. You can see the inside as you run into the middle of the track in the middle of the corner. That's wearing out. But it uh, looks like opting to take some fresh clay up high. And then he decides to opt back for low after two laps of testing that out, it seems. Yeah, didn't look like it was offering him much of an advantage there. Did get a good slingshot down the straights, but the time lost in the corners was too much to justify it. So now, uh, let's see what he can do to get past Brenton Hobson and potentially into second spot. Because remember, they're not just racing for a spot in the feature, they're also racing for a spot in the dash as well. The top two from each heat will compete in that. So, Braden Miller wants a chance of potentially improving his grid spot for the feature and having a run at pole position. That's final lap, point, though. Right there indeed, yes. Hobbo is going to be the one to hold that final dash spot for the time being, but they're close. We'll see here into the final corner one last time. Look at that, Jaden Russell going to try around the outside, oh. but it's not going to be the case as Davies from Hobson, Miller and Densley going to round out our drivers here in heat number three. But once again, fast and furious action on the dirt. And we'll bring it up on screen for you here. And yet confirmation, Nick Ryan, well, never made it back into the server and therefore did not take to the start of that one. So unfortunately, that will be, well... At this rate, the end of uh, their evening, I would suggest, race since no mm. sign of activity on that front yet either. But, mm, yeah, never mind that, unfortunately for them, because we've got one final heat to sort ourselves through with Riley Bilson and Brady Bourne to get us started here at the front of this field. Indeed, they are followed by Leo Heaton and Braden Shooten, third and fourth. Fifth and sixth are going to be Joe Daly and Travis Parrott, and then Thomas Mitchell. In car number zero two. 
is going to start off the final seventh spot. And this time, all seven cars do take to the grid. And they're already away, rolling behind the pace truck. Now, Bilson has had a pretty good season so far. He's, uh, well, especially if you um, factor in the 410 Thunder series as well. Bilson had an absolutely fantastic run in that series. Uh, so he's looking to try and hold on to a good position in the ODSC Sprint Car Championship, combining the results from this series and the 410s. But of course, Brady Baldwin is uh, looking for a little bit extra as well. He's had a really good run in the 360s so far in 2023 and is uh, fighting hard for a spot in the top five in that championship. So, well aside from all of them, what can Braden Shoot do starting out of fourth? We know how quick Braden Shoot is. There's been plenty of opportunities for him to demonstrate his speed. Uh, but he is in fourth place, and he's uh, got... Daly, Parrott, and Mitchell all behind him here, looking to get into that transfer spot and avoid the potential of going home. Down the back straight they come, and Bilson is controlling the pace very nicely here as the pace truck goes into the pits. They enter the restart zone presently behind the fence, and then Bilson waits and waits and goes. Takes them by surprise. That is a really good run there. Brady Baldwin already pushed up uh, in front of Leo Heaton there, trying to protect second spot. And already going to the high line, it seems, is Travis Parrott. And Braden Shute is following him. More and more drivers here what? looking to make the high line work, but it almost goes wrong for Braden Shute. That's a bit too high, I'd suggest there. Reese gets the, the wall with the right rear, but then it will fire it back up the inside of his teammate Joe Daly. Not able to make it stick, though, and drop back into sixth. So a shocker of a starter. So Daly gets up into the transfer spot. As, oh, Parrot's gone around at the back of the group in the 33 solo. Gathers it back up, but clips the wall for his troubles there, Reese. That will see him out of uh, a chance of fighting here for a direct transfer the long way through for the 33 is coming. Yeah, that's a real shame there for uh, for Travis Parrott. And um, there's no cautions, of course, in the heats. Uh, if you have a spin, then that's basically your race done. But Brady Baldwin now still suffering pressure from Leo Heaton and Joe Daly. Really awesome pack here for second spot. These guys don't have to fight each other too hard. They've got a good advantage over Shoot and Mitchell, and they round out the top four. So let's not try and get in each other's hair too much, guys. Joe Daly getting to the inside of Leo Heaton there, but does not have the momentum to make the move. Braden Shoot still trying the high line just behind these guys, but this is a great onboard view from the Send It Sim Sports car of Joe Daly, almost backing it into the turns here at Williams Grove. Uh, and this, that's what a big part of the reason why these drivers love this track so much. It's not, uh, it's not the kind of circuit where you want to try and just keep the car straight and flat out all the way through. You actually have to use the brakes quite a bit here. There's so much speed carried into these tight corners. Working it here as they head up into turn three for the second last time in this race. White flag going to be in the hands of Barney this time by White. Riley Bilson will see it first there. And then our top four streak on through here. As we see, oh, gets to the rear bumper oh. of Heaton once again into, into turn one. Thankfully, nothing too much of it. Shoot still too far back to make anything of it here. As it looks like it will be Bilson from Baldwin. They will be your final two drivers to head to the dash. As then drag race to the line. It looks like Heaton will have just hang on to that spot. At the end yeah. of that one there, Reese. And the results, me. definitely close indeed. Yeah, and absolutely nothing in it between Leo Heaton and Joe Daly. Two thousandths of a second separating them at the line. But they, along with Bilson and Baldwin, will transfer straight through to the feature. And then Braden Shoot, Thomas Mitchell and Travis Parrott will uh, go through into the, uh, B, into, uh, into the C main here. Which is just presently 
getting started. Looks like it is going to be a six-car grid for this one, headed up by Thomas Mitchell and Braden Morosky. Corey Borden and Nick Ryan are going to take up the second row here. And then it's Travis Parrott and Cole Ferguson who take up the rear row here. Now these drivers are the ones who uh, f finished among the worst in the heats, and this is, uh, for many of these drivers, their final chance to try and have a chance of staying in the night full stop, because uh, only the top four here transfer through to the B main. Everyone else is going to go home. Yeah, this is definitely the pressure cooker time now. Make sure that you put your best foot forward because there's nothing much left that you can give. We do unfortunately see that Nick Ryan will not be on the grid once again. So we are down from six to five. And that actually is really critical. That means there's only one person who will not make it through here, Reese. That is going to be a very nasty feeling. Uh, I'd suggest in that case as... Okay, interesting here. A little bit of a shift forward here. Uh, it seems yeah. with, with Nick Ryan being absent, the field had to be rearranged slightly. So let's see what uh, what eventuates from this. We want to try and get into some kind of formation here before the green flag flies. And it seems that they've worked it out now. Just a little bit of jostling about uh, in such a small field like this when one car does not take the start then it uh, complicates things uh, in terms of the starting order. Well, pace truck into the pit lane, and Thomas Mitchell will lead them away, hanging back a little bit as Braden Morosky. But the green flag flies, and we are away. The teammates Cole Ferguson and Corey Borden side by side on the way into turn one for second place. They want to try and keep Travis Parrott behind them. Braden Morosky not hanging on to these guys. The top four streaking away from here. Yeah, and remember, only one driver will not make it through. And I'm not quite sure what Morosky's objective was, perhaps, uh, there, because it's not really worked out well. If there was any intention, that is, to try and maximize the start, because he's definitely a little too far back. And, uh, well... I'll look away for half a second, Reese, and bang, yeah. he's on the bumper <laughs> through the middle of three and four. Doesn't quite get the run off of uh, turn four there that time. As, oh, that's, there you go, that's it. On board with Parrot. You can see Morosky down there trying to work inside line. And yeah, look at that there, throwing the angle from this way, this way backwards. It looks a little crazy. Go back on board to looking forwards here with Parrot. That'll sort of tell a better picture. Yeah, big, this is a big flick of the steering to get it in. And then still got to work it again through turn two to trying to keep it going where he wants yeah interesting to see that there are more and more drivers trying that high line i see a very distinct cushion forming up against the uh, armco barrier up the top of the circuit but they are having trouble keeping up with thomas mitchell and corey borden who are continuing to stick to the inside line here and sort of going lower mid track as well it's a very tight fight for the lead up ahead of these guys. Borden getting a slight bit of slipstream potentially on Thomas Mitchell into these corners and trying to fling it in, but there's not much happening at the moment up the front. Don't forget, this race runs for 10 laps, so they do have some extra time to sort all of this out. Those narrow exits working out well for Borden, and oh, he almost had a go at the inside there. Mitchell going a little bit wide to just give him some room. But turns out he didn't really need to. No, he didn't. I mean, also the, the way into turn one and two there for Borden as we stay on him here. But there you go, to the inside of four. If that was to be a drag race line, he'll just lose out to Mitchell, but only just. He was almost very ginger here into one and two on the last round. This time, though, he will get the lead off of Mitchell, and that's going to bring Cole Ferguson uh, into the picture here in the knee, number 81, who will continue to commit to working the higher line here through three and four. Doesn't help him catch up, obviously. That longer run around the outside and the extra time you spend well, having to try and stay in the power and keep your speed up to make up for the distance carried. Uh, although, there we go. That's a little better that time. We'll be closer to Mitchell. He's going to have to really throw it in commit or have Borden run a little bit deep there. It's going to be a drag race between the top two to the line. As here we go, white flag in the air. 
Oh, what a great run it's been for Cole Ferguson these last couple of laps. It seems the middle of the track is working out beautifully for those Rutledge Brothers racing styled imagery cars. But it's going to be the drag race to the line here. Or is it Mitchell just not able to get the power down like Borden could? And Corey Borden wins the C main. It is Mitchell, Ferguson and Parrott who finish in the top four. Braden Morosky, we will say goodbye to you now. Unfortunately, a fifth place, uh, not going to be enough to transfer through into the B main. And of course, we said goodbye to Nick Ryan quite some time ago. A shame that he wasn't able to get back into the server in time. Well, final uh, miniature race before our dash and feature. It is the B main and John Schultz and Lockie Phillips will take up the front row of this one. It's Jaden Russell and Braden Shute on the second row with Daniel Boyd and Nash Granger starting fifth and sixth. In seventh place, we have Cameron De Bruin starting alongside Borden, who won the C main. And then the rest of our top four from the C main, Thomas Mitchell, Cole Ferguson, and Travis Parrott taking up 11 cars to take to the start here. And now there's a little bit of an extra margin for these guys. The top eight will transfer through to the feature from here. But once again, you are racing for your right to race in the first place. Yeah, this is going to be important here for all of these drivers. But yeah, a lot of drivers. Sure, eight spots does seem like a fair bit, but I've got a lot that they're going to be working on here as they come around the corner. Apologies, they just lost all of my camera controls and such on screen, which is never what I want. I feel like things are just maybe new RS updates or whatever. Computer is to be a little bit funny tonight, which is not helping the case one bit. Let's get everything up that I want up, which is namely that as we get ready to get this race underway. And give me a cue to see here, Jaden Russell, a driver I probably wouldn't have thought would be having to go uh, the long way around, but it's in the top four at least here, Reese. Hopefully we'll be able to uh, hold up, well, stay up the front of this group here and make his way through, but then we'll have a tough time for the A-Main itself. Nevertheless, we're going to have 12 laps to figure this out here in the B-Main first of all. Right then, everyone's formed up nicely. We haven't had any drivers missing from the grid. No need to shuffle things around. John Schultz versus Lockie Phillips on the front row. Now, John Schultz has had some success in the past in sprint cars here at ODSE. Will he be able to continue that by securing a spot in the feature? Here we go then. Three drivers going to go home after this one as the green flag flies. And into turn one, Schultz has a nice lead. But Lockie Phillips trying to make up some ground on him. Jaden Russell is right on the back, though, trying to nab second spot. Watch them fan out here as everyone tries to find some grip across this circuit. Russell getting an excellent run on Lockie Phillips, and he's got the inside line into turn one. Manages to slot himself in there, but will it be the over-under from Lockie Phillips? No. Bit too much rotation there when it came time to put the power down. But he's going for the slider. Oh, he might have just clipped a tire on the inside there and gets another clip. And around he goes. Well, halfway at least. And to the back of the field. That's important indeed. But look at this here. We've got three deep, two wide on the, wow. alter, the inside, outside lines through one and two. That there would have been about fifth on back. Uh, to Therefore, would be basically the rear of the field. As these drivers all trying to sort out who's going to get through. Nash Granger is the one who's currently holding on in the number 25. Dropper gear, motorsport entry there on the... Well, now has Colt Ferguson look, working his inside to try and take that final transfer position away from him here. As look at them straight now getting a little bit more orderly in single file. And while all oh, that's been happening, Jaden Russell gotten through on John Schultz to improve his position to the front of the field. And now has a bit of margin to work with. But meanwhile... Side by side between Thomas Mitchell, Corey Borden, and Cole Ferguson has gotten through on Nash Granger for that transfer spot. Oh dear, Nash Granger in a bit of trouble here, and he's trying his best to hold on to it. Travis Parrott also working his way through too. Parrott up into ninth and trying to work his way forward a little bit more, but they're too busy fighting with each other there, side by side, as Lockie Phillips has not been able to catch up to these guys. On board with Parrott, trying the extreme inside line. Got to try and straighten it up. 
but if you want a straighter exit, it seems the outside line is where you want to be now. And he knows that. Round he goes, tries to get the slingshot onto the back straight, but it's not enough for the time being. Yeah, got all kinds of crazy action here. Look at this. Uh, wow, up here, this is for third place in behind Daniel Boyd with Corey Borden and Thomas Mitchell trying to work him over both there. And the outside run for Borden in the 07 is going to take the spot away for P3 there. Lovely bit of run off of the outside. Oh, contact oh. though in the background. Mitchell gets into the rear of Boyd. Looks like both cars though are going to hang on for now. Mitchell, the bigger loser, will drop back to P6 here, Reese. Now he's still got a, a good margin over Cole Ferguson and Braden Shute who take up the final two spots in that top eight. But the pair battling of Nash Granger and Travis Parrott are starting to close in on them. Look at them there. They're running quite well, but if they get no. together, it's not going to work out. And that will almost certainly be day done for both of those drivers. And now I think our top eight are pretty much undisputed because there's Lockie Phillips still trying to recover after his uh, slide, spin, and contact. But he is 2.4 seconds off of the cars ahead here as, as they continue. Look, it's two by two once again through turn one and two. As that is Borden, Bo that was Borden, Boyd, De Bruin, and Mitchell. They all sort themselves out single file here as we're coming to the white flag for the B main. As that's a big old slide there Ooh. out of the final turn for Borden. That chokes his momentum, but looks like he'll be okay for now. Yep, it seems that way, and there's a good space between the cars here. There's going to be one final lunge here from Cameron De Bruin getting up the inside of Daniel Boyd, but the outside line is with him. Jaden Russell crosses the line and wins the B main. Schultz, Borden, and uh, De Bruin are your top four. Daniel Boyd will finish in fifth spot. Thomas Mitchell from ninth to sixth. Cole Ferguson from tenth to seventh. And Braden Shute will take it uh, through to the feature as well in eighth and the send it Sim Sports number 59. Unfortunately, it is goodbye for uh, Lockie Phillips, uh, Travis, and Travis Parrott, uh, as well as Nash Granger, who we thought would be uh, in contention there in the top eight. Granger started in sixth spot and ends up uh, 11th and retired at the very end of it. Well... Now we get into the warm-up session, which means it is just about time for the dash. Presented, of course, by King Race Designs. Here's a short message from them. Well, thanks very much to King Race Designs for your support of the dash here in the ODSE Neuropower 360 Power Series. This is going to be a fun one. The dash is uh, a little uh, heads up kind of race here. Only six laps and the winner of this will start on pole position. Tim Ryan and Joel Berkeley on the front row. It's been a long time since we've seen these drivers racing together off the front row of a grid. And let's see who will get the run in and take pole position for round three of the 360 Power Series. Launching each other very closely here at the start. We've got, of course, uh, Bilson, Davies, Barry, Vickers, uh, Hobson, and Baldwin racing in this one too. The green flag flies, and lap one of six is go. Tim Ryan leading into the first corner here. Joel Berkeley, though, going three wide and all the way back to fourth there with Bilson and Davies getting an excellent run on him. Sorry there. <laughs> I had myself muted that entire time. Yeah, nice one for Davis. There's got Hayden Vickers working the outside of the front stretch there. Although he's rubbing the wall a couple of times. That nearly came unstuck in a bad way as Davies and Bilson scrap for second. Vickers consolidates third there as they run across the line. And I believe that was uh, Josh Barry there. Yeah, Barry, who is inside, who they get a spot back 
as he takes the low line through three and four. He's able to get up and shut off the 15 as it's then Brady Ball in behind for position number uh, six. As then you've got, uh, and then it's Berkeley and uh, Hobson at the back of the group. As I've got to remember to be careful here because I'm looking at got lap times on the screen, but that's not what matters here because it's all about uh, the positions on track, and that would be their third lap here. Uh, no, sorry, fourth lap. Apologies, they're already on now. So nearly done nice. with this dash, and it uh, looks like. Oh. Yeah, let's go back here and have a look at things. Indeed, it's getting busy, Reese. Yeah, it absolutely is. Hayden Vickers trying around the outside of Josh Barry. Brady Baldwin in there with him as well. Berkeley's been shuffled all the way to the back of the pack and is falling off. Brenton Hobson still keeping uh, an eye there on a seventh spot. Lap five of six here, and it is the Tim Ryan show up the front. But my goodness, what a theatre it is here between Hayden Vickers and Josh Barry. Can Brady Baldwin get the run around the outside at the start of the final lap of the dash? He certainly can on the way into turn one, but holding the inside is Josh Barry. They almost go three wide on the exit of the corner. Into turn three they come then, and Baldwin out on the high line. Can he get the run across the line? Well, Tim Ryan secured pole position. Clayton Davies going to start second. Riley Bilson in third. They come together across the line. Goodness me. At the end of it, looks like uh, Josh Barry just beat Brady Baldwin to the line. Well, let's try and see if we can grab a quick replay of that one there, I think. Because, yeah, that was probably worth a basic shot of that one. Let's see if the replays still work whilst we're in the middle of that. Uh, the answer would be no, I don't think they do, because we're in the middle of a warm-up session. I think it doesn't quite uh, expect that. So, uh, alas, that will be a, a bit of a lost cause until uh, later on. But that's all right. Hmm. Well, then, um, we, we have our top eight sorted. Uh, Tim Ryan will start on pole. Then it will be Clayton Davies, Riley Bilson, Hayden Vickers, Josh Barry, Brady Baldwin, Brenton Hobson, and Joel Berkeley. All right, just a moment left here in the warp. I think we'll get progression to the feature in a moment. Uh, All wow. All right, then. Seems that, uh, yeah, just uh, some final briefings going on here for the... Uh, final couple of minutes of the warm-up and the the session advancement has been made which means now we can go into the 30 lap feature here and of course that is 30 green flag laps because if they go under caution laps won't count so top eight might be a little bit scrambled here but we will um manage to uh, get them sorted into their uh, positions from the dash either way Tim Ryan gridding on the front row alongside Joel Berkeley and then Clayton Davies and Riley Bilson behind them Josh Barry and Hayden Vickers will be fifth and sixth on the grid and then Brenton Hobson and Brady Baldwin seventh and eighth off that uh, little uh, staging area then everyone behind them nathan vanderwacker and sean stevens will round out the top 10 and it's brayden miller and leo heaton starting in 11th and 12th that's the top half of the field daniel gow will be starting on the inside of the seventh row We've got brent hobbs to his outside there in 14th place blaine densley will start at the 15th sharing the row with joe daly the 16th your ninth row here tonight with Jaden russell and john schultz out of that B main. And then your last couple of drivers in Corey Borden, Cameron De Bruin, Daniel Boyd, Thomas Mitchell, Cole Ferguson, and Braden Shute, your 24th and final driver who will make it through here to the A main as we'll be waiting on drivers being allowed to uh, oh, basically shuffle themselves here. Because you said that top. Uh, Eight drivers, a little bit mixed up, of course, thanks to the dash here, yeah, thanks to King Race Designs. But now, looks like, from what I can hear, Reese, the, the shuffling indeed has been good. As you can see, Davies on the outside of that front row. So, now just getting ready for Barney to give us that green flag. Absolutely. I believe it will be one more lap here behind the pace truck before 
That green flag is dropped and we go racing for round three of the Oceanic Dirt Sim Events 360 Power Series presented by Neuro Power. Williams Grove has turned it up as it always does. I'm so glad that we're back at this fantastic circuit. But Tim Ryan, starting on the front row, he's decided to choose the inside line this time. You, uh, in ODSE events, you can choose which side of the row you start on if you're the pole position car. Tim Ryan, I've seen go to the outside more often than not, so he evidently sees that the inside has something here on the start. Away they go then. Power down. Green flag flies. We're racing at Williams Grove. Clayton Davies keeping an eye out there for everyone behind him. Hayden Vickers losing a bit of momentum out of turn two. And Riley Bilson challenging Davies for third place. Have a look at them all fan out once again. Let's see how many drivers try the outside line this time. Davies now losing second spot to Bilson. The outside exit is brilliant out of turn four. Looks like it is definitely strong at the moment. And caution has come out, though. Looks like Braden Miller. Oh, dear. Braden Miller Ooh. and Daniel Gow have gotten together. Gow there. 90 degrees across the track. Yeah, that's a yeah. shame there. Uh, looks to me like, uh, well, it, it didn't even look like a huge amount of contact. Um, Braden Miller had to have a couple of goes at the steering on the way into turn two here. And uh, everyone just checking up in front of him. And, well, you'll see Daniel Gao get turned right there. Uh, a couple other drivers involved in that, but most of them got away with uh, no damage whatsoever. At the very least, they both managed to stay in the race, which is uh, definitely a bonus. Bonus. Apologies there. So the timing tower with the uh, the caution laps don't count. Does get a little excited uh, here. Yeah, so I'll get that one tucked away on the screen. As uh, yeah, a bit of chatter on the comms uh, there, Reese, uh, for that one. Mm. Some question marks around the initial start there from both the drivers and race control, I should add. Uh, so, looks like they'll be keeping perhaps a closer eye on things uh, for this restart here. And, uh, yeah, good call indeed. Big old check up there ahead of uh, Daniel Gow and, and Co. Unfortunately, yeah, got a fair few drivers uh, mixed up in it as a result. Such as dirt racing, such as oval racing in general. If you're in the middle of a pack, it's all about uh, trying to keep momentum up. And if one driver ends up losing out a bit of mid-corner speed. It has an accordion effect for everyone behind. Looks to me like uh, the start will be double file. Uh, I'm not too sure on that. We haven't had a uh, confirmation as to whether or not restarts have been changed to single file here, but I've noticed so far this season a lot of the caution restarts have been single file. So we'll wait uh, maybe a lap more to see if the drivers still form up in two lines along the racetrack. Pace truck's still out, and uh, we have some black flags being cleared for a few drivers, uh, evidently. A um, couple of uh, automatic penalties being, uh, being applied that drivers didn't necessarily deserve. Well, looks to me like we are actually going for a single file restart here. Tim Ryan's going to lead them away once again, but Riley Bilson on the charge. Let's see how they go then. Ryan uh, getting a great start and absolutely flinging it into the corner was Riley Bilson. Just trying to keep up with Ryan. Once he is in the f in front, there's not much stopping him. Berkeley right in the middle of this pack, going to the inside there with Brenton Hobson. Hayden Vickers and Josh Barry on the high line there. And have a look at the run that Berkeley has. Uh, he's going to try and get by Hobson here, potentially. Extreme inside line for him. And Hobson gets a bit too much of a slide on on the exit of the corner. But then Brady Baldwin, uh, sorry, Josh Barry says, thank you very much. I will take that outside line and keep my momentum up. Will he switch to the inside for turn one? No, he's going to stick to the outside. Evidently, he and Hobson are finding something up there. Yeah, it's definitely good momentum. But now we're seeing drivers, look at that, Joel Berkeley, really loving the inside, it seems, at one and two in particular. Not so strong through three and four for initially, Ooh. but does a better job through, well, the turn four component, I guess you could say, of that inner line compared to Hayden Vickers. So 
Now getting a real mix-up, but that time through one and two, out of line, stronger. Oh, there we go. Barry's around. Ooh. Yeah, that's big. Caution's out once more. I can also confirm that Daniel Gao has retired from the race. That is uh, heartbreaking there for Daniel. And Josh Barry, that's uh, especially unfortunate for him because no other car was involved in turning him around. Guess what? It's one of those places at Williams Grove that you really got to watch out for. And that is the outside wall down the back straight. Bam. Oh, Right at the opening. And, oh, who's that? Is that Brady Baldwin who might have clipped him there? Thompson um, clipped oh. him, definitely. Is it a darker car there? See if we can just pick this one up. Might uh, have been Joe Daly. It was Joe Daly. Ah, there we go, indeed. Yep. Excellent spot there. Reese, unfortunately, yeah. I just saw a dark car from this uh, high up Colossus. Well, yeah, center of track cam, as you call it. That I'm using. Oh, there we go. Back to live. Good. And once again, race neutralized. Uh. Well, there we go. Seeing uh, seeing a comment from Blaine Densley in the Insim chat about the start zone. There's there's potential that some drivers might not be following the start zone rules on the restart here, or. Perhaps Tim Ryan is leaving it a bit too late. Um, just going to uh, double check in the ODSE Discord. Well, I can, I can tell you, Reese. actually. Specifically, the start zone. That, uh, Tim Ryan's been cautioned for uh, being too late uh, mm. in his... Uh, in his starts. So they've actually yeah. just called a final warning over the in-game radio... Uh, for the leader of the race in that number 98 Ultra C Sports 360 machine. Uh, so that's going to be one to watch out for here uh, because that could uh, be interesting to see. As to, well, if that is penalised, as to how exactly is it? Looks like Pace Truck going to duck on in there to the inside of the uh, corner. So it looks like we will get ourselves back to racing once again here. We will. Keep an eye out for those uh, two traffic lights on the outside of the circuit. That's where the restart zone is, and it looks like Tim Ryan was right with it that time. And into turns one and two they go once more. Clayton Davies fighting to try and get second place back from Riley Bilson, but this is quite the fight here. Hobson's leading this battle, and Nathan Vanderwacker trying. Oh, no, we've got another turn there. Sean Stevens getting turned around, and that was a concertina behind. Looks like the uh, 011 of Blaine Densley involved in that as well got absolutely cleaned up by Cole Ferguson. Oh, boy, that was quite messy. So, on board here with Ferguson, if we can, real quick. Try and get a read of how that one played out. And on board, indeed. Yeah, well, I thought it's direct, way ahead of him, actually. Apologies. And then, oh, just tries to find a gap on the outside. There was no gap on the outside, unfortunately, for him there. No. Not much that could be done there. Um, of course, you know, the, these incidents, they tend to happen so quickly that, uh, well, you, you don't have much time to react. And... You see just how damaged that car is. They're coming into the pits um, potentially to get a fast repair. You are allowed one uh, in ODSE sanctioned events. Blaine Densley takes his. Cole Ferguson, unfortunately, overshooting his pit box. He hasn't quite been able to get the car lined up there, but eventually he does get that fresh car, and they can both go back out on track. Daniel Gao is still the one and only car to have retired from this feature event. And, uh, well, we've only managed to get six whole laps of racing in so far. Don't forget also that uh, there is a time limit on the race too. 25 minutes max in uh, in the server i'm not sure if that was uh that was intentional to try and move the night along but hey we'd much rather see some racing rather than pacing around under caution after a maximum of one or two laps of action yeah i think part of the time limit there tonight race is specifically because 
of the fact we do have maintenance incoming in about 40 minutes time so this is just to ensure that this is all wrapped up well in advance as we're coming around once again the question is will tim ryan make sure he puts the foot down in time that looked a little earlier that looked i think uh, a little more acceptable uh, by the, the start zone rules so field spaces out a little bit more at the front so i think that did indeed check the boxes for start procedure Shuffling towards the back of the group. Brayden Schutz has dropped in behind Daniel Boyd. Berkeley and Vickers switch places here on the inside of three and four. And this time the inside is definitely strong there for Berkeley. He'll move himself up into fifth there with that one. Yeah, Joel Berkeley's on a nice charge at the moment. Remember, he started in eighth. He hasn't had many opportunities to gain positions because the green flag runs so far have been so short. But once we get some running in, I'm sure Joel is going to start rounding up these guys ahead of him and try and pursue Tim Ryan for victory. And have a look at this pack behind. This is fantastic. Right up the top there is Brenton Hobson and uh, Sean Stevens on the bottom at the front of that train making contact. Leo Heaton gets into Sean Stevens and then Jaden Russell got into Heaton. Russell's another driver trying to make up some spots here in the number 27. He is. He's making good progress of it oh. so far. as Oh, big check in front of him. That was Heaton and Sean Stevens. They both drop in behind De Bruin will follow on through as will Daniel Boyd and they make up even more spots you can see here Russell De Bruin and uh, Boyd your top three on positions gained in this race so far tonight they're making really solid steps forward uh, coming from right down the back thanks to their trip swamp the long way through uh, so far the lead is starting to close up as well. Tim Ryan still sticking to the inside through these corners. Oh. But have a look at Riley Bilson. Oh, dear. Yep. All right. We'll stay with these guys because it is starting to get a little insane here. Spin in front. Daniel Boyd around and the 0-2 of Thomas Mitchell as well. Oh, there's Boyd. There's, oh, yeah. there's Thomas Mitchell indeed. Okay, so uh, that was started by Boyd getting into Leo Heaton. Heaton checked up into turn one. Boyd hit him, and then in came Thomas Mitchell. Nowhere to go. He could have afforded maybe to go a bit higher, but he'd already committed to the corner by that point. Yeah, it's always going to be a tough one to uh, avoid, I guess you could say, because, yeah, that was yeah, just checkups here seem to be really painful and costly. Uh when it comes to getting things right. So, so, yeah, just hearing over the radio, yeah. unfortunately, calling that one a bit of a, a racing deal. Uh, and no further going to be given on that one there from the sounds of it. And so, back pacing once more. Yeah, so. What I was uh, going to say before that incident happened was um, it seems that Tim Ryan is starting to lose the edge out front. He was committing to the inside line through the corners, but Bilson and Baldwin were running the high line quite well and actually starting to make up time on Ryan. So I'm wondering if, uh, if, if Tim's just going to, to commit fully to running the low line try and focus on uh, getting rotation on the inside or might he wind the wing back and uh, try and give the high line a go tim ryan has often won events by uh, doing something a little bit different to the drivers behind him so this will be uh this will be fascinating to see how this plays out yeah i'm just looking at the inside whilst we ride around on board here with ryan just look how narrow the the, the fresher looking uh, track of clay is on the inside of both turns which I think is going to make that inside line a real challenge for drivers because it's going to have that right rear hanging out in this darker more worn down section of the clay yeah, entry to three there you can probably work uh, just a car's width just but then here race in particular we'll stay on board here for a moment with the restart once again waiting for that lights out yep puts the foot down just before it ends we'll go green once again here in the A main, work their way down to turn one. Yeah, and have a look, the high line already 
Riley Bilson, massive run onto the back straight. He's getting that straight line speed that he needs to have a lunge on Tim Ryan. Baldwin running a bit too high there in the uh, end of the corner. Still maintains third though. It's starting to close up between Davies, uh, uh, Berkeley and Van der Wacker as well. Brenton Hobson has fallen back in the midst of all of this action. Uh, but we're seeing that Tim Ryan, Clayton Davies and Joel Berkeley all committing there to the inside line as we look at the drivers further back in at the field. There's some good racing going on back here coming into turn one. Corey Borden all oh, gets into the wall, but he'll continue forward momentum and we will stay green. But that's going to be all the way to the back for Mr. Borden there. And off this particular restart, it looks like Tim Ryan has gotten in a groove, gotten he in has. quick, and he is now looking to run away with it. Meanwhile, look at that there on the inside. Brady Baldwin only just keeping Clayton Davies in behind. They're really struggling to find the line in. See, they go. Berkeley switches to the outside, the three and four. Bilson goes low, and that actually puts him vulnerable to Baldwin here down the front stretch. Oh, he'll keep a nose ahead, and then it's going to have to be a long run around. Oh, but he slides up into the dark stuff. That's oh. P2. For Baldwin and Davies and Berkeley are going after what oh, remains of Bilson here in a three, oh, three wide. Three wide and it almost resulted in a spin, but Davies and Bilson both recover there. And there goes Nathan Vanderwacker past Bilson as well. Now it's between Davies and Berkeley for third place on the road. Side by side, these two are going to go... Uh, add it all the way. Davies up in the dark road. Oh, Berkeley oh. in the wall though on the outside. As Van der Wacker then gets compromised as a result on that outside line as he follows through. Ferguson and Hobbs are dueling and Hobbs, unfortunately, has now lost his front wing on the, uh, the 64 and well, just as it seemed like it was getting into a really nice rhythm there, Reese. We're going to go back under yellow once again and time to find out what's happened here to the number 64. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, Cole Ferguson running into the corner there just slid up a bit. Perhaps went in a bit too hot, lost some grip over the, the, the dark stuff, and well, there wasn't much that the number 64 could do. No, I'd say so indeed, unfortunately, there. All right, two-thirds down, one-third to go, but uh, almost four-fifths down on the clock as all dip. Oh, yeah, real yeah, hard that, time that's there. the end of it. End of it there for uh, the number 64 there. And, uh, well, now we have to consider how this race is going to end. If it's going to end under laps or under time. Because uh, we're starting to come up to, uh, let's say... Uh, about seven minutes to go, potentially. Yes, actually, yeah. Seven minutes and 40 seconds remaining. And uh, if there's another couple of cautions, then we might be in danger of running over that time limit. Yeah, it's yeah, been... I actually thought we were down to five minutes to go, but no, nope, I've completely I had to remind myself that we've had uh, the grid timing, the grid time, and then the formation lap time. So, yeah, we are still got about seven minutes in the bank. Uh, but nevertheless, that's not a huge amount of time. Pace truck has stayed out. So, yeah, we're going to be going, looking at maybe... So let's see here, what are we going to... It's going to be about six and a half or so, probably before we get back to green. And then we're going to have to do ten laps. Sorry, we're gonna, yeah, we're going to have to do ten laps if we want to get this race uh, wrapped up and done to take the checker uh, when expected. Then again, well, for drivers who... I'm interested to see if drivers maybe are tied on fuel in this A-Main thanks to all the cautions and cycling around here. Whether they've, uh, they'll be welcome perhaps that the uh, it goes time certain perhaps here tonight. We'll have to see. Mm. Yeah, we'll have to. So with, um, with, with about, yeah, probably six and a half minutes remaining on the clock when we go green, assuming that all remaining laps are green, uh, it's going to be 160, 170 seconds, which is just shy under three minutes of racing. And that's if there are no other cautions. Otherwise, we might see things get a bit tight here as it is very tight up the front with the green flag flying. Ryan leads Baldwin into the first corner. And Davies versus Berkeley on the inside for third place. They're both struggling to keep it straight. 
Well, both are trying to keep it so straight, I think, and keep the tyres, the rear tyres, of course, in particular, down in the fresher parts of the clay. But that's right up, of course, against the wall and the tyres on the inside of these turns. You can see Berkeley opts to go high side here for the run through one and two, try and pick up some momentum on Davies, sacrifice a bit of uh, the gap that he had momentarily. Vanderwacker will slide on up to follow on that high side. Riley Bilson trying to recover is now up to seventh. Uh, but that's uh, not quite where he'd like to be, given he was up as high as second early on in this one. De Bruin's going to lose out there through turns one and two to Vickers, but gets a spot back on the right, on the run out. He does indeed. Excellent battling going on here. Van der Wacker versus Russell at the front of this train. Bilson gets the run on De Bruin. Can Hayden Vickers do anything to combat these guys? Looking a little bit further back, it is an absolutely massive pack here for uh, 11th spot. Brenton Hobson having to yield to Leo Heaton and Braden shoot at the front of this one, and they go three wide. The caution is back out. We've had a car spun. It's Daniel Boyd into the wall at turn three. That was due to a tangle with Josh Barry down the back straight. Oh, dear. Unfortunate. There, once again, so we pick it up here on the replay. And, oh, that's already happened, so back some more. We'll see as so we go. Barry on the inside there as they head down the stretch. And, oh, Barry's going to shut the door on Boyd and then tries to go inside for three. It doesn't get there and instead to get into the rear bar uh, of that number 14 machine. And then stricken sideways across the track, unable to get it rotated there, Reese. And there we go. Caution, as you said, back out once again. All right. Going to need to do five more laps to take the lap count here tonight. Clock down to four minutes. So this is definitely going to be tight. We've just got enough if it stays green here. And actually in all of that one there, I missed a couple of uh, things. Cole Ferguson, Daniel Boyd, both end of line penalties for them here in this one race. Yes, Cole Ferguson was given an end-of-line penalty um, on that last restart for his part in the incident that brought out the previous caution to this one. And it looks like Liam James realises that time is running out. He's actually shortened the caution. We're going to be going green this time by. All right. I mean, it makes sense. Fair enough. Try and get this race uh, to finish uh, under green conditions. Five to go here in the return to Williams Grove for the ODSC Europe Power 360 Power Series. Tim Ryan has looked to be mostly unchallenged here as they come round three and four for the final time. Make sure you don't leave it too late there. That's very late, it seems, but seems okay. So they get this one underway once again. Just in the margins, Ryan leads. And it's going to be on for second here. Davies trying the inside line, but the momentum is with Brady Baldwin, who is running that high line beautifully. He's finding the fresh clay. Focusing on straight exits down low are Davies and Berkeley. And if they get tangled with each other too much, they're just going to allow Tim Ryan to run away with it. In fact, he is starting to run away with it already. Lap 27 of 30. We focus our eyes back here on Cameron De Bruin, who's trying to make up some ground here on Nathan Vanderwacker and Jaden Russell. And at the huge pack once again behind for everyone outside the top 10. Brenton Hobson just having to let uh, Blaine Densley go. Three laps to go here. Can we get to the finish without bringing out another caution? I certainly hope so. Penultimate lap begins now for Tim Ryan at the front of the field, and it is on for second. Brady Baldwin and Clayton Davies side by side into the first turn. Will they manage to get out in one piece? They're giving each other a lot of space, which is good to see. But you can see that Davies is just struggling to get a good exit there versus the sheer power of the outside line. But it looks like he's managed to just do it. Fantastic stuff as the white flag flies here in round three of the 360 Power Series. It is going to be on for second again. Davies is going to have to protect from Baldwin. Tim Ryan rounds the final corner and will take victory at Williams Grove. He'll be very happy with that one. Clayton Davies will just fend off Brady Baldwin for second. Joel Berkeley in fourth. And there you 
you go. How's that for a run to the line? Went all the way there, it feels like, Reese, but... Well, Tim Ryan looked unchallenged there. How about that half a second, despite deciding to uh, throw that one back and forth on his way to the end of that one. But then, in behind him, it would be Clayton Davies to edge out Brady Baldwin here tonight. Joel Berkeley, so a job, but just didn't quite have the run there to the end. We'll have to settle for fourth. Jaden Russell... One of your biggest movers tonight, up 12 spots, but in saying that, still not quite the biggest mover. Cameron De Bruin goes slightly better. Reese that up 14 to finish in sixth. Hayden Vickers, unfortunately, there. Bit of a mixed bag at toward the front of the field, all the same, but we'll have to settle for seventh. Braden Shoot, though, he is your biggest mover tonight from the dead last position in this field. He brings it home in eighth place to make it plus 16 tonight. Blaine Densley also moves up. Plus six to finish ninth. And Nathan Vanderwacker rounds out your top ten just off the rear bumper of Densley there to round out this first page. Yeah, Riley Bilson's going to come home in 11th spot, followed by Joe Daly and Brenton Hobson. Lockie Phillips manages to finish ahead of Josh Barry. Round out the top 15. Leo Heaton uh, managed to avoid a lot of the carnage, but he was involved very close to it. Joe, uh, Cole Ferguson getting an end-of-line penalty due to his part in causing one of the cautions. Settles for 17th. Daniel Boyd comes across the line in 18th spot. And Thomas Mitchell, 19th. Uh, and uh, John Schultz, unfortunately, retiring from this one. Three laps from the end. The same can be said for Brent Hob Hobbs, 11 laps from the end. Corey Borden, 15 laps from the end. Braden Miller and Daniel Gow unfortunately not able to make it even to the halfway point of the race. Real shame for those two. We could have seen them fighting in at the top 10 and up towards the front. Well, now we go into our post-race coverage. We're going to have chats to our podium. We start off, of course, with Tim Ryan, who is back on the top step of the podium in the 360 Power Series. Tim, that was quite the interesting race from your perspective, I'm sure. Yeah, it was just saving tyres the first um, 20 laps and the last 10. And, um, could use them up a little bit. I uh, didn't really know where to run to save the tyres either and uh, didn't know whether it'd be to, to really roll the bottom uh, and really limit the wheel spin but be in a more abrasive part of the track or be where Brady was where you'd be more, more likely having to drive a little bit harder and spin the wheels but you're in a fresher part of the track and with the beauty of it being a new build it's a bit of an unknown so I still don't know if that was the right call even if we did get the win um, that's something that will take time and experience uh, but yeah it's good to get the win on the new build um, got a good handle on these cars and to be honest I think it will show even more uh, tracks uh, moving forward that aren't Williams Grove. Yeah for sure and just uh, just give us a driver's perspective as to what the dirt changes feel like. I know you said that, uh, that that you need a little bit more experience with this build to really get the best out of it but what are you feeling right away? What are your first impressions? Yeah like honestly drove that race on the bottom uh, quite well with how new the build is. So even with more experience than that. I probably wouldn't go much quicker than that. I think the thing is just knowing whether I was doing the right line down that bottom. And I think that's, I, I, if I would have got beaten, then I might have known. Um, it's just, it's a real difficult one. Like, and again, it only time will be the factor because um, it's just things we can't really test for. And with myself always doing things by myself, I can't really relate to a teammate to see what tie where they were, were they had it at the end of the race, maybe running a different line. Um, but yeah, we'll just keep working at it. Yeah, for sure. Especially considering that, you know, the first couple of rounds of this season uh, haven't quite gone your way, uh, I, I guess, compared to the, the standard that you set before. Um, this being your, your first uh, feature win of the 360 Power Series season, do you think this is uh, going to be uh, a, a, a sort of a point to consider for future rounds to come? Do you think you're going to continue taking wins from here on the new build? Yeah, I feel, as I said, I do feel pretty comfortable with my pace and I think it will only be stronger at some of the other tracks coming up on the service. Um, but you never know, people could catch up and they could find something as well. Um, we'll just keep chipping away and trying our best each week. 
Well, the floor is yours, Tim Ryan. Anyone you'd like to thank for your feature victory tonight? Uh, Liam, Brady and co, uh, all the people that put the series on. I really enjoy coming on each week, especially when we're getting these uh, really good bunch of people racing. Um, even Jaden Russell did another solid job tonight, 17th to 5th, so um, it's really nice to see him um, step it up and he's he's looking like he's going to be a consistent uh, front runner, which is awesome. Uh, I'd like to thank the team, uh, Logitech G Ultra C Sports and our partners VRS, uh, Astro Gaming, Cube Controls, and I'd also like to thank, uh, obviously, my setup business, Speed Factory. Um, if you want to set up, jump on board and I'll be happy to help you. All right, thanks very much for joining us, Tim Ryan. Hopefully we get more chances to talk to you towards the end of the season. Second place on the road was Clayton Davies in a magnificent performance, which he will explore with Dan Yeaman. Thanks there, Reese, for handing that one over. And yeah, well done again tonight, Clayton. Uh, obviously not quite the top step uh, this evening, but uh, definitely a, a tight race all the same. What's it like out there with the new build, first of all, I guess, uh, is well, I guess what I'm curious to ask. Uh, given your experience uh, with the dirt uh, on iRacing being uh, pretty substantial? Um, I can't really give too much feedback considering that how little laps I've done. I've kind of, um, at first I wasn't really much of a fan of it, so I kind of did some other things in the meantime, and I only really started to get right back into it today before I, um, before I jumped in. Um, like, obviously, nowhere near amount of laps of what Tim has put in over the last couple of weeks to say minimum um with i'm i'm stoked with it i like it does there's some bugs that they they're going to be fixing of course uh, just with how the track visibly wears but overall it, it is an improvement um it was hard it was a it's a it's a learning curve to say the least cars are completely different you're going to drive them completely actually you have to take care of the car itself you can't just do what I used to do and bang it on the boards as hard as you can go and just pray that you don't catch the wall and go up and over. You actually really have to drive the car like a race car and give it some respect and it paid off. Like um, our wear was pretty good. I'm hoping that um, that's around the figures that you need to be getting and to build off of that exact pool, build off of that kind of percentages. I had some interesting feedback to hear there. And yeah, giving interesting to hear that, yeah. Uh, we heard from Tim too that management of the car and the opening part of the A main and that, that that sort of that that majority of the race as well even uh, sort of like sort of yeah I guess w was there a point you sort of felt confident towards the end uh, that you you could sort of yeah push a little bit harder or were you sort of managing it sort of mo well I, pre I presume you actually say managing it most of the way and then maybe start pushing a little bit harder to the end because uh, obviously the scrap with uh, you got guys like Joel Berkeley and Brady Baldwin behind you tonight uh, really trying to keep the pressure on you there. Um, had to work for that second place in the main. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, first 15 laps, I was in full management mode. I, I didn't really want to be that person to push too hard and then just got swallowed whole. It's, I'd rather spend the 15 laps, just kind of let everyone else play their game and then I come back into it and kind of make my way around. But up into the point where um, Joel got in up and close. That was he kept me honest that whole race. Um, there was a bit of contact, which is it's never any malice between me and him. It's just good hard racing. Um, yeah, it was. I tried to con like conserve as much as I could, but once Berkeley got under my tail, I kind of had to push. And um, I noticed that there was a bit of drop off from Riley and eventually from Brady, and I was able to capitalise on it. Like Brady did an absolute ripper of a job. He's he supplied the whole team. The sets tonight i was able to just jump in and rip them and it was probably the most stable i've felt in a while i haven't really been able to try um the set from where i usually get them but no brady did an awesome job with supplying a really good car for us well good to hear synergy firing on plenty of cylinders here tonight before we let you go clayton anyone else you want to shout out for your result here at williams grove uh, yeah, I'd like to thank, uh, first of all, uh, you and um, Reese and all the boys at SimSpeed for putting on the broadcast. It's my favourite broadcast. Um, all the guys at ODSC for putting on the series. It's great to be back. And them having patience on a lot of drivers figuring out this new model. It, take, it takes a lot of patience to deal with 24 dudes to really just trying to figure it out. Um, all, the guy, all the partners on the car and with the team, you got Parramatta Izuzu, you got... Um, 
Western Machine Shop, 2-7 Designs, Atlantic Oil, Western Machine Shop. Um, uh, trying to think of the rest of them. There's so many. Um, Way Runner, uh, Works Racing Components, Watercraft, everyone there. And yeah, everyone, every, all the boys in Discord, Blaine, Miller, um, Hobbsy. Yeah, just everyone for helping out. And there we are, Clayton Davies. Thanks for chatting with us. Good luck. Yeah, well, well done tonight and look forward to hopefully chatting with you as the series continues in the next couple of weeks. And that'll mean... Oh, I was going to say we would have one more person to talk to. Actually, we do. He's already jumped in the box. Pretty ball went doing a sneaky on me. I'll hand back to you, Reese, and uh, chat to our final podium getter here in the A-Main. It was, in fact, me doing the sneaky by dragging Brady in here. Welcome, Brady. Third place for you here at the Grove. Uh, Clayton was uh, was talking about all of the hard work you've done on the setups for this one. Uh, this this new build uh, really providing a challenge to everyone. Oh, certainly, Reese. It's um, it's been hurting my head just trying to think about how to get speed. Um, about a week ago, we we're doing some testing, and Tim was miles quicker. Um, so we're all a bit worried and probably a bit skeptical and not knowing what was going to happen tonight um and yeah the a man was pretty good uh looks i knew the bottom would probably be the quickest way for most of the race uh so i just did something different around the top and i think in portions of the race we were probably matching or a tiny bit quicker than tim um but my tire wear just uh went off real bad in the last five laps and Lost second to Davies there, um, so that's something else you got to account for, is uh, with the tie wear now. So, um, unfortunately, just me choosing to run that line and three and four, burn up my left rear a little bit too much. So I was really struggling to get down the straightaways, but uh, I'll take P3, that's for sure. Yeah, certainly. It definitely gives you a good haul of points to continue that run in the championship. But uh, uh, in, uh, in in a very short while, you're going to be going over to America to work for a real sprint car team. So how's that going to affect the rest of your season and ODSE as a whole? Uh, so for this season, I literally fly out like two days after the final race or two or three days after the final race. So um, we'll be here for the rest of this series. Um, and then going forward next year, still got to make those plans and talk to Liam, Glenn, um, you know, Dan and Jay and everyone at SimSpeed and work out what we want to do for next year. But, um, yeah, try and enjoy the last, what, three rounds now. Uh, we've got a week off uh, next week uh, due to State of Origin being on, so we'll be back the following week at Lernerville, which will be another uh, challenging track. Um, but, yeah, the overseas thing's really cool, and um, I'll actually get to go to Williams Grove in real life, so that's pretty cool as well. <laughs> Excellent. Might get some pointers for the sim as well. well uh, and a little uh, other nugget of information in there. Uh, we are actually going to Lernerville for the next round. Lanier was uh, was the placeholder, I believe, at the start of the season. So uh, what made you choose Lernerville? Um, pretty sure we had Lernerville scheduled in for round four. Um, and then Lanier will be round five the following round because we didn't get a right, new track. Yes. So, um, yeah, so Lernerville... the wrong usually, image. <laughs> that's all right. Um, yeah, Lernerville puts on really good racing. Um, before, it was probably a bit of a top-dominant track on the old build. Um, but with the new build, I think it's going to be completely different. Um, if you ran that race track on the old build, it would have been around the top the whole race. Um, there would have been no bottom at all. So, um, it's certainly going to be interesting next week. Um, completely different track. Um, I've only done laps on the new build at Williams Grove in the 360s. So... Just preparing for this race, didn't want to get my head in uh, wrong decision making on setups and whatnot. Um, so it's going to be another challenge, and yeah, completely different track. So I'm looking forward to the challenge, and hopefully we can keep up the speed because we've uh, had two starts and two podiums, so not gone too bad so far. Yeah, certainly. Well, uh, floor is yours once again, Brady. Anyone you'd like to thank for that podium tonight? Yeah, obviously everyone at Synergy Sim Racing, uh, Hobbo, J Russ, Gary, uh, Hayden and Davies as well, um, being a big help um, with building the setups and giving feedback and we ran pretty good tonight, 2-3 and j Rush charged through to P5 and Hayden P7 so we had a few cars in the top 10 uh, which was really good and Hobbo literally just jumped on tonight um, so for him to make the A main was an achievement in itself for him so that was, it was a really good effort uh, from him but uh, all the sponsors as well, uh, Parramatta, Isuzu Ute, uh, Works Racing Components, Watercraft Performance Centre, Speedway Shop, uh, Dr. Epoxy, DM Um Obviously, you and Dan for putting on the broadcast and 
all that you do and obviously Jay behind the scenes as well and um, Liam and Glenn for looking after race control, doing a really good job. All right, big thanks to uh, Brady, Clayton and Tim for joining us in the comms box and uh, that's going to bring to an end proceedings for tonight, Dan. What a fantastic round once again, of course, Lernerville coming up next and that's going to be once again, as Brady said, in two weeks time due to state of origin, but uh, Lernerville always turns it up. It's going to be fantastic. Yeah, one of the tracks that I've watched a couple of things here and there on the iRacing service and with the Australian Dirt Sim Events crew. And uh, it's such a unique track, obviously, uh, with the fact you can quite literally throw yourself over the edge and uh, that could be the way you end your race uh, at some point. And uh, yeah, good to hear that, well, we'll be back racing. Unfortunately, the season has been up and down, left and right. Uh, yeah, new content, state of origin, gaps of state of origin, given the number of uh, uh, passionate rugby fans, it seems, up north. Uh, amongst those who live up there so we'll be uh, yeah it's another Wednesday off for me uh, next week at least but looking forward to getting into that second half of the season starting here at the end of June and uh, yeah another unique track to see us go there absolutely well big thanks to uh, everyone on the streams on YouTube Facebook and kick for tuning in make sure to follow us on our social media we're, we're SimSpeed Esports Network on Facebook and at SimSpeed TV on Twitter. Make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube as well so you don't miss another moment. I'm Reese Gardner, Dan Yeaman alongside me. We want to give a big thanks to all of the series partners, including Fast Print, DM Simtography, Loose Operations, Wash It Mobile Truck Washing, and King Race Designs for helping to put all of this on. And of course, to Brady and the crew at ODSE for bringing us on to broadcast this fantastic dirt racing series. Thanks very much, everybody, and we will see you next time. Thank you.